Hello, welcome back. Thank you for coming back to the channel. We've got a fantastic video here today to react to from Haley Alexis. How I Know America messed me up since living in Germany. I'm interested to know how am I messed up? <laughs> how has America scrambled my brain a little bit? Surely it has in some kind of way. <laughs> uh, maybe living anywhere will mess you up a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. Well, we'll at least find out how America messes you up. Uh, I've watched one of this person's videos before, and it was very entertaining, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Hi, everyone. What is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey, you guys. Oh, I know. What's up? So, in today's video, y'all, you have asked. I have delivered. <laughs> A lot of y'all yes. have been commenting under my videos with links to videos of Americans talking about how the United States messed me up. Mm. I'm going to be making my own version <laughs> of this video. I'm going to, have to watch some more of these. humor, but a lot of these points are very serious. Ooh. And so with that being said, let's keep this intro relatively you don't short, laugh, you'll quick, cry. and simple. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this forget to leave. Skipping on forward a little bit because I can see where it starts. Y'all, the first thing that I can talk about is or are the vegetables. I don't know what it is. Vegetables. But the United States. I, I do know what it is now, but when I first came to Germany and I started eating stuff, especially raw vegetables, I always wondered why it tasted so weird. I don't know how to explain it to you guys. Mm, so not necessarily better, but weird, huh? What are we doing here? Putting sugar in the seeds? I always wondered why it tasted so weird. I don't know how to explain it to you guys. You, if you know, you know, and it only I happened to me when I lived in Germany and then went back to the United States after like being here for a year or two. And I don't know what we do with food in the United States, but we just add so much. And so eating vegetables in Germany, I sometimes feel like I'm eating very healthy. I mean, eating vegetables <laughs> is healthy. It's also normal. That's also a shock for me. That's how I know the United States messed me up when I ate one little piece of paprika and I really thought I was moving mountains with my health. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what paprika is, really, other than a spice. I didn't know that you could just eat a piece of it. Oh, Haley, you're not doing anything <laughs> eating that one little piece of paprika. This is also the same. So clearly, I'm messed up. With a lot of different <laughs> snacks um, and unhealthy food options, when you come to Germany and you get cookies and then you compare it to an American cookie and the American cookie is 20 times sweeter even though the German cookie itself is already very sweet and so that mm. took me a very long time. It's kind of like when I drank Diet Coke for like a year and then tried a real Coke and I was like what, what the heck it's just straight sugar um but yeah I will say going to like farmers markets like uh, legit actual food coming out of the ground and then they just like give it to you it does taste a lot better than what you get some processed crap and saran wrap. To get my, how do you say, taste buds and just my body acclimated to this change. And so I knew the United States messed me up when I came to Germany, ate some vegetables and thought to myself, ooh, why does this taste so bland? Or why does this taste like vegetables? Why does this taste so healthy? It's because I was used to every single freaking vegetable of mine, stir fried, sauteed, and a pound of butter and oil. It does taste so good when you put the butter in there, you saute it, you get rid of all the nutrition. It all leaks out, and then you're just left with this like crispy. <laughs> and that's not healthy and that's not normal and that's not how you should Shocking. consume vegetables on a daily basis. I'm here to tell you if you're an American watch. I do love raw vegetables though. Oh my gosh, just a raw, uh, like cucumbers, uh, b green bell peppers. This. Don't do that. I, you're probably an American and you do that. I promise you, don't do that. No. So the okay. next point, you guys, okay. is actually something y'all pointed out to me. And I wasn't even like thinking in the back of my head, in the front of my head, anywhere in my head, that this <laughs> could actually be an issue. But then I sat there and I reflected and I was like, wow, y'all are really right. But when I got sick in the United States and I called off of work, mm -hmm. I felt guilty. I felt 
bad even though I was sick. And not even that I felt bad. Sometimes my employers made me feel bad. Absolutely. Like, are you sure that you can't just come in for a few hours? And what sucks is that's oftentimes like the, <laughs> the lowest paying jobs too. Those are the ones that really are just like, uh, no, you're coming in. A lot of people won't even, you only get so many sick days, you know? It's like, oh, well, I'm not allowed to be sick, so I guess I'm not. Two hours, are you, are, are you sure you're missing the whole day? But we are a family, Haley. Are you just gonna leave your coworkers to fend for themselves? It's gonna be so hard if you're not here, and oh my gosh, how are we supposed to survive mm -hmm. without you? And then- Now I will say, I'm, I'm curious like how that's different in Germany because surely you still would run into the same issue where if you're running the McDonald's and nobody else is, knows how to make the burgers and you're sick, aren't they going to be like, damn it! Like maybe they won't pressure you into coming in, but you, they've still got that issue where it's like, Haley is sick today, so we can't make anything. We don't know what we're doing. And anything like that. And of course, you come hobbling in, <laughs> sick as a dog, work, because you feel completely bad. And in the United Heck States, yeah. companies, corporations like to say, we're a family. And they do oh, this yeah. so they can brainwash you to make you feel bad, to not call off or do anything that you wouldn't do. I hate when people feel bad about that, though. I'm like, what do you feel bad? Like that's your, this is your life. This is a contract between you and them. If you can't work, I don't know. There's nothing to feel bad about. It's stupid. Due to your family. Now, granted, now, <laughs> if I get sick, my family deuces. You won't hear from me. You won't, uh, I'll come out, you know, out of my cocoon when I am a nice little butterfly <laughs> feeling better after I'm sick. But back in the day, I was not like that. And so this trickles down from like work culture, family culture, or your family culture trickles into down into your work culture. Mm. And it's like a pseudo mind game that companies play with you so they can get more out of you. I think I would be the worst employee in the Makes United sense. States. They would probably hate me in the United States because I'd probably start a union. <laughs> <laughs> I would band together with everyone to try to get better workers. The funniest thing is getting a job at like Walmart where I did have a job and they'll sit you down and force you to watch a, a, a video about how bad unions are. Like it's freaking Clockwork Orange and they have your eyes. They don't have, they don't, they don't do that, but you have to sit there and watch a video about like how evil unions are and stuff. It's very funny. Right, but I would also be the employee where they say, are you sure you want to call out? I'd be like, F those people, F this company. I'm sick, I care about my health. Y'all don't care about my health. You don't give me no health care, yeah, some no family. good health care, no good health insurance. Why should I care about y'all? Hmm. I probably wouldn't say it in that exact tone, y'all. I, I would say it in a more respectful manner, but you would get the point. So the next point is going to be turning down surgeries and procedures when I go to the doctor. This doesn't mm. happen anymore for the most part. I would say like 99.9% .9 this doesn't happen. I'll tell you one thing. They found a heart murmur in me and they said, all right, we're going to send you in for an echocardiogram. And I said, how much is that going to cost me? They said, um, about 4,000. And I said, nope happen but when i first got to germany you guys i turned down so many different procedures because i didn't know how the system worked i always thought when a doctor was explaining this extensive medical care plan that it was going to cost me an arm and a leg and so i would listen <laughs> they probably thought what the heck is wrong with this girl i would listen i would take in everything that they said take the paper um, take their advice and say thank you but no i never said why not? I just would always say no thank you. Um, I usually wouldn't follow up. I wouldn't go to the doctor's appointments. And I don't remember what exactly was the tipping point. I think it was when I had my surgery in 2016 or 2017, I don't recall. And I went to a specialist. I told her my issues. She told me, hey, you need surgery. And in the back of my head, I thought it was gonna cost me like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 dollars. I wasn't really concerning myself with that. Um, I had the 
the fear in the back of my head, but I was more focused on my health at that time. I think mm -hmm. like I took a turn. I was like, I need to focus on my health because I know this isn't helping me. I'm not getting better. I'm not doing okay. And so after I got out of the hospital, I think it was three or four days, I went to the front desk. I asked for the bill. I asked when they were going to mail it to me. And they said, oh, well, you could pay right now. And I was like, girl, I don't got money like that. I'm like, hey, you want it? pay right now? Uh, do y'all accept credit am? cards from the United States? And she's like, it's only 30 or I think 40 bucks. And I was like, for what? But when's the big bill coming for? Is that like the, um, the waiting room fee? the surgery that I had to stay in the hospital for three days. And she was like, what is that do you for mean? the aspirin Like pill? every time you guys, when I'm asking about money at a doctor's office, you know, in the beginning of my stay here, it was always like, what do you mean? And I'm like, what do you mean, girl? And so from there, it goes into my next point. And that is when I went to get procedures done that were maybe extra. They weren't covered by my insurance. There are certain things that I get done just because of the surgery that I've had in the past that I feel like are necessary, but they aren't really medically necessary. And they cost me about, I would say 90 euros a year. And so I remember wow. the first time <laughs> my doctor was explaining this to me and she was like, yeah, it's going to be extremely expensive. Um, it's going to cost more money, but no big deal. We can work with billing to where they send it, you know, instead of today, they send it in two to four weeks. So then you have like two to four weeks to pay. And so you have a little time and her saying it's 90 euros. And I was like, girl, I got enough Kleingeld. Like, <laughs> look at my purse. I could probably find 90 euros worth of coins in there. I'm like, here we go. Let is, let, let's go. It made me realize what expensive is or like the sharp how do you say contrasting differences of what expensive is in the medical world in germany and the united states in the united states Can't imagine i'm thinking expensive i'm thinking a thousand plus dollars the lady at yeah. my doctor's office is saying that 90 to 100 euros is expensive and the thing <sighs> is when you have such high sums like in the united states you start normalizing those Absolutely. numbers like oh you're only paying 500 bucks for this test and for an american you're like oh well that's not bad because last year i had to pay 750 wow i'm getting a humongous discount but in reality that same test overseas costs 50 bucks one tenth of the price so the next point is going to be donating paid time off to co-workers so i mean i've gone in just to like the urgent care for like a scan for like a kidney stone and I thought it was great that that was only 200 bucks. Something that is common and happens in a few businesses and corporations in the United States is that employees will donate some of their paid time off to sick employees. Someone that I know has cancer, they work a full-time job, they use all of their paid time off, they use all of their sick leave, and they had to basically beg all of their coworkers to donate one day of paid time off so they were able to stay home for a few weeks while they were recovering for chemo. I think oh I've God. told this story. I've never heard of that. That's interesting though. Before on my channel, but I just wanted to bring it up again. Some people donate two, some people donate eight, some people donate a couple of days. Huh. Who knows? Throw in a week because I'm not going on vacation anyways because I got to stay here and work 60 hours a week that happens and then you give it to the person they're able to take their time off and the corporation or the company just sits there and says wow you guys are so generous you're so helpful you are heroes you are so amazing while they sit back and do nothing i literally used to think that this was like like i said heroic and generous of people but i just realized that it's corporations being greedy it's just people getting taken advantage assholes would literally ice cold boxes for hearts as a company when i see one of my and uh, part of the problem is there's like most of the people who make those decisions don't even know you so they don't even have any personal connection they don't care about the people they're making these policies for ice cold boxes for hearts as a company when i see one of my employees that has cancer that has a life-threatening illness disease or sickness and i say mm, you people over there y'all need to do something about your family and this is also what yeah, <laughs> you know, this is why they do me. this little family trick because then it's easier to say do you, would you want your sister to be sick for two weeks with no payment and you 
you have all of these vacation days and these hours that you're not using anyway. Would you really want that to be your family member? And if this so isn't an gross. ethics code violation, I don't know what else would be. The next point you guys is going to be something I talked about in my previous video and it is that GoFundMes are not normal. I used to think this was Dude, an amazing- Those those really bother me too. GoFundMes for medical stuff. It's so sad how you have to start a GoFundMe and everybody has to come together and pitch in a bunch of money to save some kid with cancer. And that money's just all going to like some insurance dude and like the pharmaceutical companies and the owners of the hospital like ew ew an option i mean it technically still is for a lot of people because so many people fall through the cracks of our system in the united states and Thankfully, there are people that are charitable and generous out there that can help these people that aren't our government, but I digress. Now I realize that this is not normal. This is not okay. That Shouldn't I have to be. turn to random people on the internet to have my best interests when it comes to healthcare in the back of their head. So the next point you guys is going to be something that happened to me, I think last year, right? Is that when I ended up in the hospital for a week? I'm gonna tell you guys a story. I don't remember if I told this story in the video when I talked about going to the hospital, but when I was at the gym, I was really pushing myself on the machine. I mean, really pushing myself. I, I'm not the pinnacle of fitness or health here, you guys. So um, think of it my max, which is probably not the max for a lot of people. I was okay. working out relatively hard and I was feeling something happening while I was working out. I stopped, I ran upstairs, I laid down on the bank at the gym and I just told myself to lay- I don't know what that means, on the bank. Lay there for 10 minutes, you know, let your body relax, let your body like cool down. 10 to 15 minutes pass of me laying on this bank nothing happened. Thanks. Shaking, sweating, feeling like I'm gonna throw up. My body's like cramped all together. Um, I'm sitting there in my full workout clothes, just like shaking. And so I'm texting Mike, hey Mike, I think something's really wrong. And he's like, oh yeah, just come home. And I'm like, no, really wrong. And he's like, well, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I think I really need to go to the hospital. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I just don't know if I can call the ambulance or if you should call the ambulance. I don't know what to do. And he's like, if you have to go to the hospital, Haley, then call the ambulance. And I'm like, but are you sure? And I'm like questioning in my head if I should really call the ambulance, if I should really go to the hospital, or if I should just sit and wait and hope for the best. So Mike calls the ambulance. He comes into the bathroom with me at the gym. The ambulance shows up. They gotta put me on the stretcher, roll me out of the gym. So embarrassing, <laughs> late at night, sweating, nasty, looking a hot ass mess, <laughs> and drive me off to the hospital. And in the back of my head, I was thinking to myself, Haley, it's fine, you're in Germany, you can do that. But I still had this hesitation, this resistance to get into the ambulance or let them come and check me because I've said it before. Uh, I've never taken an ambulance. That's for sure. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I would need to be literally, I mean, seriously, I would need to be dying to consider an ambulance. If I like broke my arms, I would just have someone drive me to the hospital. Um, that's what I've done for any other kind, kind of injury or anything. Um, but my dad, my dad like fell off his bicycle or no, 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 no. My dad fell off his motorcycle, uh, broke his ribs and some dude called him an ambulance. The ambulance showed up and he's like, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to get back on the motorcycle and drive myself to the hospital because <laughs> the ambulance is so expensive. <laughs> I was still like in my mind, I can't let the ambulance come because they're gonna charge me $1,000 to transfer me to the hospital and I don't wanna pay that. And it was like 1, stress would be cheap, dude. pure. Yeah. I was honestly debating if Mike's mom, cause they were on a trip somewhere driving back to our house, if they should come to the gym, pick me up from their way home, drive me to the hospital, or if I should take an Uber, if I should ask someone at the gym to drive me to the hospital, I was honestly in the back of my head just buzzing. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And that's the last thing you should do, want, or need when you're in an emergency. Yeah. So the last and final point you guys is gonna be semi-controversial and it is going to be, I know the United States messed me up when I thought fireworks were gunshots, y'all. <laughs> now I do have to say, let me, how do you say, 
preface this. That might depend on what city you grew up in. Preface this by saying that I grew up in a relatively rural country town where hunting, shooting yeah. was quite normal. My grandma yeah. lived on 12 and a half acres, you guys. And if it wasn't a deer being shot, it was a turkey being shot. And so on the weekend, during the week, whenever you would hear gunshots, it would be quite normal. People were hunting, right. that's what they did. So <laughs> there are- Although those towns are also oftentimes the one that shoot off the most fireworks during, during a firework holiday. Certain types of shots, that I can differentiate between, or maybe different types of guns that I can differentiate between. But there are some times, you guys, when I am in Germany and I hear a firework out of nowhere that I'm like, what, what the fuck? We it's got like PTSD. Oh, duck. I don't know, get down low on the ground, y'all. We gotta dodge bullets here <laughs> left and right, or like a very loud noise of some sort. My first reaction is to think it's a gunshot. And to put it into perspective for you guys, I've also talked about this on my channel very briefly. We had two gun incidents, incidents at my schools. One was at a middle school, one was at a high school. In my middle school, wow. a kid brought like a little BB gun to school and he shot out um, a few of the lights and like he put a hole in the window. I don't know if he was doing it because he was cool or he thought he was being cool. Don't know what the- Definitely not because he was cool. <laughs> the reason was, but that happened. I tried to look through the news archives in my old city to try to find a story about this, but there's nothing in the newspaper about this, which I find to be so shocking that it was never reported. It was never talked about. It was just a little kid brought a BB gun to school, shot up some windows, shot up some lights. <laughs> no big deal, hush, hush. And then the next time that a gun in incident happened at my school is that a kid brought a gun to school. I think we were maybe like 12 to 14 or 15 ish. And I think he was going to try to shoot the kid that was bullying him. I don't recall 1000% what happened. I've told the story before though. Um, someone saw he had a gun. Cops came, shut down the whole school. Wow. We had to lay on our stomachs for hours in the dark with the doors locked, waiting for cops to come, sweep the whole school, sweep our backpacks, pat us down, make sure we had no weapons whatsoever. And then we went on like it was nothing. And sometimes I feel like I have PTSD, which some of you guys might laugh at me and that's perfectly fine, but it is not normal for a loud noise or a loud pop to in your brain create a connection to a weapon trying to harm you and create this fight or flight response inside of you. You can be scared, but you can't be scared that you're gonna get shot by a gun. That's not a normal <laughs> connection in the United States, yes, but every yeah. other place in the world oh man it's not and so yeah wow <laughs> yeah i've never had any incidents with like at the schools i've attended with firearms or anything so that's good i'm i'm happy about that um i know there are like bb guns are allowed in germany right and i know there's the slingshot channel dude and he he has like crossbows and stuff, right? So I don't know the gun laws very well in Germany. I'll have to look that up. Um, I'll have to do a video on that. Uh, hey, if you wanna watch some more German reaction content, you found the channel. Yes. You can subscribe, but either way, thank you for joining me and watching this video. And thank you to Haley Alexis for this awesome video. That was super interesting. <gasps> And I hope you guys have a great rest of your morning, night, whatever, whatever time it is there. Goodbye.